Okay, welcome back. So now what we're going to do is we are going to calculate the capacity of our uh, hospital beds. Okay, so we can think of the capacity of the hospital beds as how many bed nights do we have and how many bed nights would our patients need? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put here like uh, number of hospital beds as constraint. Okay, and we're going to start off with the number of beds. Okay, so based on the case, there are 89 beds, right, uh, in, in the hospital right now. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and multiply that by the number of uh, nights uh, per week, per week, okay? And seven nights a week, right? And that's just kind of given, okay? Equals equals uh, number of bed nights per week. So that's 89 beds, seven nights a week equals 623 bed nights per week. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and, and this is seven because regardless of whether we're doing surgeries five days a week or seven days a week, the patients are staying in our, and can't stay in the hospital, right? Because the bed is there. Um, and so maximally we have 623 bed nights per week. So now the question is how many, uh, how many nights does the patient stay? And I'm gonna go ahead and say, divided by the average length of, not surgery, but stay, okay? Okay, average length of stay. And the average length of stay right now, the case isn't super specific about this, but it did mention that some patients stay three nights, some stay four. So I'm gonna go ahead and put three, 3.5, just to kind of split the difference here, okay? Uh, and I'm going to make this an assumption because uh, we kind of don't know, right? Divided by the average length of stay equals, oops, available patient, patient stays per week. So I'm going to write average length of stay per patient, okay? Uh, average length of stay uh, in bed nights per patient. That way we can keep our unit math straight, right? Okay, equals that divided by that, okay? So, okay. So we have 89 beds which are each one of those beds is available seven nights a week, which means we have 623 bed nights per week. If each patient on average stays 3.5 nights, then we can accommodate 178 patients in any given week, okay? Um, and so, if we can, based on our hospital beds, accommodate 178 patients per week, right? But we can conduct 840 or 200 uh, surgeries, right? Um, based on the number of operating rooms that we have, uh, our constraint is still the number of hospital beds, right? Because we can accommodate fewer people in our hospital beds than we can accommodate in our operating rooms. Now, ask yourself, okay, between the number of hospital beds and our surgeons, which one of those two things is the bottleneck in the Shoaldice 
patient process? Is it the number of hospital beds that we have, or is it the number of surgeons, uh, surgeries that our surgeons can complete? Pause the video and kind of think about it a little bit um, and your justification, and then return when you're ready for an answer. Okay, welcome back. So if you said it's still the number of hospital beds um, that is our constraint, then you're correct because the throughput, the capacity that the hospital beds can accommodate is lower than what the surgical staff can accommodate. Our hospital beds can accommodate 178 people, but our surgical staff can only accommodate 180 people. Okay. Now, if the operating room was a constraint, I'm going to change this to seven, right? If we only conduct surgeries in our operating rooms for seven hours a day, then between the three of these, the operating room would be the cons constraint, right? So we need to find the minimum of these numbers in order to identify the uh, bottleneck of the system, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and say that this is the capacity of the hospital beds, okay? And then I'm going to write here um, constraint of shoal dice patient process. I'm going to change constraints to bottle neck. Okay. And I'm going to say min, the minimum of this number, this number, and this number. Okay. So right now, the minimum is 175. The smallest capacity, the smallest throughput is the bottleneck of the process. So right now, the operating room is our constraint. If we run the operating room eight hours a day, then the hospital beds is the constraint, okay? And we're gonna do a little bit of formatting automation here. So now we wanna automate, right? These numbers, to look different based on whether or not they represent the bottleneck. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, we're going to select these cells. I'm gonna hold down the control key. Select these cells and I'm gonna choose conditional formatting. Highlight cell rule equal to, okay? Now, if the cell is equal to, here, this cell, right, and it, it has absolute references here, fill with red and red text. Click OK. Okay, so this number is equal to this, and so it's now red. If I change this to seven hours, all of a sudden, this is now the bottleneck, and this changes colors, right, because it is now the bottleneck. I'm going to go ahead and change that back, and let's say that doctors on average work three and a half hours on surgery, right? If they work three and a half hours on surgery, then this is now the bottleneck, okay? So I'm gonna kind of return it to its original situation where we have uh, four hours worth of surgery on average for doctors and then uh, eight operating hours a day um, and 89 um, beds. Um, and so we can see clearly now that the capacity of the hospital beds is our bottleneck. So at the most, right now, as the process stands, we, have a, we can process 178 patients through the experience, the shoulder ice experience in any given week. And that is being constrained by the number of hospital beds um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the clinic.